Hello again and welcome back. Uh, the mad scientist has been up to it again. I've been, uh, got me a new computer. Just doing some rearranging, moving the D1 and making a nice home for it. Just doing a little house painting. Painting the walls and I'm thinking, wait a minute. I've got water soluble paint in my hands. <laughs> what better paint would there be for doing these cups for making a masking? The only problem is, it's so thick, brushing it on, it just, it's streaky, it's a mess. Trying to get it thin enough to go through a gun, it would just run and make another mess. So why are you staring at a bowl? Well, had anybody thought about dipping? Yeah. That's dry, and look how clean and smooth the finish is. All I did was add a little bit of water to it to thin it down. You don't need quite, I'm using that little butter dish. Everybody's got some in the cabinet, and watch, I'll show you here. And instead of drying rack, I've got plenty of pencils. Uh, T-shirts, bags, God, you need to keep tons of them around. If you're doing house painting or something, you slide your paint tray in one of these. You can do your painting and you just throw the thing away. There's the best all-around tool I've got. I use them for everything. Um, I say this is just the black house paint. And I put some water in it. I mean, it looks runny. But it still feels thick when you when you move through it with the, um, with the paddle here. But the fun part is, it doesn't take that much down in there. Can you see how much is in there? Oops, it's stuck to my paper. It's not quite half a bow. And it don't take that much because when you put your cup down in there, air gets trapped in here and it pushes it up the side. So the taller, the taller your container is, the more you can get up on the sides. That's more than enough for me. But... All I'm doing is dropping it straight down in there. You push it in there. And if you got more, it'll come right up to the edge of the, the dish. But you just keep pushing it down. And it'll go all the way to the bottom. And just pick it up. That's it. Big parts to jump all off. Set it on your rack. We'll see how long that one takes to dry. I've got some cups I want to do, and yes, I would like to do them with the traditional uh, the frosting on the outside, because these are going to a bar, and I'm sure they would like to use them, and I don't want to have to worry about it. Now this one here, Somehow had a streak. But it's around glass. I'll just put that somewhere else. But I mean, the consistency of it, I don't see where you could get any better except for a film. And without the light on it, it's dark. It's going to be way dark enough for the laser. And the beauty is. When you're done, you can just set that in the sink, and all that will fall right off. We're getting ready to find out. I'm going to throw one in the laser and try it in the rotary. We'll see what happens. Well, our coating is dry. You know, it's been dry on a few of them. I've done a few tests already and had to coat some more, and it does just as good every time around. I mean, look how nice that lays down there. Here comes my graphic. I did a test. 
I mean, that's looking nice. But that there is on the inside. That's the only blemish. That's, I mean, dark spot, and that's nothing. I mean, look how nice that coating is. And if you get the light off of it, it's opaque. It's it's a nice surface to shoot. Uh, that's without any light shining, shining, shining through that at all. I've got it blocked my light. Now, when you get down the other side, I'm going to wash this, show you how easy it is. It just falls off. And in another video, uh, thanks to James Adams over in the, the X-Tool D1 official page, uh, he has been putting one shot lettering enamel on his cups and what color this is but I've got plenty around let me see what I've got here mm, who are you I can't even read it that's bright red I've got uh, every color under the rainbow around here this, I was using this can here to as a in the tumbler I was putting it in my cups to balance my cups <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and do the other side of this uh, same settings pretty much what I was using before I'll get you that once we get it in here I'm gonna give you a couple quick rotary tips while we're here I know shut up and put the stuff in there um, one, I've seen a lot of everybody fortifying and having to do stuff with the rotary sliding around on a table. Well, one, metal against wood is going to slide. I just tape a piece of paper down. That'll stop a lot of sliding. Second thing is, move my head, uh, go over to your junk drawer, and I'll bet you you've got some felt feet. Put you some felt feet on it and it won't slide around as much um, if you ain't got felt feet oops, that's not sitting on that cord it's just it's under there and that keeps it out of the way but if you don't have felt feet you can use weather stripping Some windows the door weather stripping put you a couple strips of that on there that keeps your thing from sliding around your rotor from sliding around now, if you notice that piece of tape down in the bottom there, that's one nice piece of tape. It's got a line in it. Let me show you that line. I'll turn this thing on. Just before I show you that line, I'll show you a unique problem I'm having with these cups. Is how much smaller they are on this end than this end. Well, that's not going to roll straight in the rotary, so you need to make you some kind of washer. This here is <laughs> two different kinds of weather stripping tape, foam tape. It's working. I'm going to have to make washers if I do any more. It's not going to hold up to very many pieces, but it's working. Now, you got that on there. That's got your, your level here. Through it here. You might be level across there, but your glass is still crooked. So what I've done is jack up one end of the rotary so my glass actually is level underneath the laser. And that's easy enough to do with a board I've got it figured out but my piece of tape in there and you, you got the thing moved around all you bumped it you've done whatever Let me move my little thing over here that's about my level where I need to be right there but with that piece of tape in there I hit that stripe up there and up here and you can just run it back and forth, tweak it in if you really need to. 
but that just gets your your rotary straight all I did was put a piece of tape in the bottom use the flat end of your of a ruler get it stuck up against there real good make sure you're square kind of mark it and just draw your line whatever you get beats the heck out of your eyeball in a pinch that'll get you a lot square and it's on the fly you don't have to keep stopping and centering and doing things and messing around um, I've got my graphics set up Look up here it is. I am going to have another trick. Let me show you the bottom of my glass here. I didn't do it on this one. Usually what I do yeah, a piece out here. Normally before I get started. I'll figure out where on the where in the cup where I want, where the best place is where my masking is the best or where I want to do my work and then just put a piece of tape across the end of the cut then when you do, if you had it on there before you can line up that and then you know where your center is on the other side and I use the centering of the image in your light burn I tell it to center off of the, the, the center of the top side of the graphic on the glass and it seems to be working out good I'm not very far up the top. I didn't measure. Now usually what I'll do is when you get your top set you just with a tape measure, I just measure to my to the crosshair and just use it for a reference. If you're if you don't move the head when you're done, you can rotate your cup. I'm actually pretty close here, so it, it gets rough to get that massive thing in and out of there without moving the head out of the way but all you do is just take a tape measure from the end to your thing and you'll be the same on each one <coughs> yeah. the one on the other side I had done it the standard 100 uh, 140 uh, 100 for power 40 mms for speed I'm going to go ahead and take it up 10 because it's not taking much to get through this. I might even be able to go up to 60, but for right now I'm just going to run it at 50. And that's using, um, the other side was done with grayscale as the image mode, the standard 0.1 for the line. Uh, interval and over scanning it to standard 2.5. Uh, let's go ahead and frame this. And I like using center. That way your cup doesn't have to roll. It's only rolling half the graphic back and forth. The cup isn't rolling that far. If you start off the edge, that cup's got to roll that whole graphic distance and keep and coming back. Yes, it's just the same size, but if it starts in the middle of the graphic, it only has to go halfway. The chances of your cup moving and being off are a lot less. It's just working out better for me. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start that. I didn't check my line on the bottom to make sure I was straight. It didn't do the hop. It's looking in the right spot, so... Yeah, I'm going to wipe these down with one shot and see how much it boosts because the ones I've been getting I've been looking for something this this method is not this this particular masking method just this, this way of cutting 
the graphics isn't going to do what I want it to do. You can't get the colors. You can't do the stuff burning through and doing the outside of the glass as I can with the paper on the inside. I'm getting a lot more gradients. I can get a lot more color. Uh, yeah, I was trying to get things that just kept mushing all the colors together. And no, it wasn't the line weights. No, it wasn't. It's the limits and how much it'll do. It's using so much laser, not so much, but a part of the percentage of the laser is used for getting through the masking material. But don't leave that much left for cutting the band of what you can do with it once you've got it in there. Now here, this one here. I mean, it don't. It's not. You can get it in there. It looks all right, but it's so faded when it's off on its own. It don't have that bright white look. None of this has that crystals that I really like that you're used to seeing. But what kills me is it does from the inside. You can see the crystals from the inside. And this is what got me started. I started noticing the flaking. Well, I kept throwing more power and more power and more power. I think this one here, the first one I did, it didn't flake. I threw a bunch of power at it. It wasn't doing what I wanted. I thought maybe, well, just one coat of the, uh, the paint. Just one coat of paint wasn't enough. It wasn't opaque enough, so I put a second coat on. Uh, that didn't help matters out any at all either. That wasn't what the problem was. I actually needed to back it up and slow it down. I was... I just seen one in here. It's actually trying to flake. But it kills me. It's got the greatest... I mean, on the inside of that glass, it's got the most perfect etching on the inside of the glass as far as you know the, the, the speckles and the green the, what I look for and what I'd like to have and what is on the inside the outside is rather smooth it's it's weird it's not what I'm used to seeing but this is my first attempt at any doing them with the outside, doing the, the exterior mask, and everything I've done has been on the inside of the glass, so I'm, I can't really judge. I'm, I prefer the finished texture of mine, but now in this last one I got going on here, I'm actually was liking it. Now I'm thinking that that's got a nice grain to it, but it's still not the same grain that's on the inside. That in there is gorgeous. But then again, you're looking through the glass and it's magnifying. So, I don't know. But I'm going to try that one with the one shot. I got six of these that I need to get out of here. And some other things. <laughs> but yeah, I thought you'd love this dip. Uh, the dip. It's super simple. Put it in, you saw in the first part. Uh, put it in a, I used a butter trip. Use, use a container small enough close to the size of your cup. You don't want to get it in too wide. This means you more 
more paint. The closer you can get to your cut size, the better. And make sure it's tall enough. If you're wanting paint all the way up here, you better have a tub that deep. And you only need to fill it maybe halfway, if that. Because when you start pushing it in there, an air pocket will form on, the, on your front edge. And an air pocket will keep the paint from getting up inside of it. So as you push it down into that, into your container, as you push it down, it's going to back up around the edges and come back up. Now what was cool was in that butter dish, it would get to the top to where you thought it was rolling over. It get right there to that edge. You thought sure it was coming out, and you could keep pushing the cup down in there, and it wouldn't come over the edge. And I got to go farther now. I need to mix more because that's as far as I could go with what I've got left over there. I'm going to mix more because I've got some cocktail glasses and some other things I'm going to dip. But I have dipped them. I didn't like them. Washed them off. I've tried different things. Came to where if you pour in, uh, it's two to one paint to water. So whatever you put in and paint half it with water stir it up and you're just gonna have to work from there if, if you put dip it you pull it out you put it on your cookie sheet and it's cascading making wrinkles it's still a little too thick um, add just a little bit of water uh, be careful and make sure that you ain't got fingerprints you want to wipe them down good before you dip them but you just dip them in, and then what I do is uh, dip them, and then just roll it in your hand for just a second. Let everything get kind of even on that cup. Just kind of hold it. Roll it in your hand for just a you know, second or two, two or three turns. Then put it on your cookie sheet, and it cascades out to that gorgeous sheet. Um, I can't believe it. I'm just going to put a hashtag... Um, uh latex dip no uh, i mean i'm gonna put that hashtag on it so people can find it or if you tell somebody about it just tell, they can search the the group by just putting that on there but, yeah i mean if you want to go buy fancy stuff go ahead you want to I'm not saying this is better than anything, it's just an alternative. Uh, there are people that can't get some of this stuff. There are people in places that, this, that some of these maskings and things that we're enjoying, they can't even get. They've got to come up with something else. Well, this latex house paint is probably the easiest thing to work with. It's water soluble, it falls right off. It does what it should. Um, the problem is, is pa try, if you're trying to paint it on with a brush, it's it's a mess. I mean, it it doubles up every time your brush goes over something, and trying to get an even coat is next to impossible with a brush. Even with a roller, you just have a weirdness. Now, trying to get it thin enough to go through a gun. It just runs and it don't do anything. This actually works. Now, if you, I've got a tub of water set up here. You drop them in the tub of water. A minute later, you go back and it's floating on the top of the tub. It's done come off. So, if you were doing a dozen or so glasses, get your first one done, drop it in the tub, get your second one going, you could be coating out more glasses, it gets, you could flip it over, do your second graphic, when the second graphic starts, you wipe this cup down, put it up over here, and go back to coating out more glasses, you could have them in a rack, uh, coating the glasses, I've been wondering if a blow dryer, uh, boy, I got close to the edge of the glass there, didn't I? The mouth. Uh, if you take a blow dryer, 
you could actually coax it and keep some runs out of it with it, but warming it up a little bit might get that first coat to dry and keep it from running. At the first layer, get it to your let it get it to affix to that glass. I'm also wondering if you didn't take the blow dryer and shoot it up in the glass and warm the glass up before you dip it. If that wouldn't, when you, it would make that first layer cling to that glass and dry to that glass and prevent any running. It might be worth a shot. I got a feeling people be coming up with all kinds of stuff with this now. We'll see what happens. Now, the sheets and, you know, a good clear coat, I'm not saying it's better than any one of them. It's just an alternative. I could see them sheets being a lot better for um, being more consistent, but how many sheets is it going to take? I mean, this graphic is three and a half by two, which means I'd have to cut a piece four and a half by three to make sure I made it. I'm, you know, cutting my back, cutting my piece that close. I don't know, you'd be cutting extra, so how many of them squares are you going to get out of a sheet? How many sheets is it going to take to do this? To do a dozen piece order. This, everybody's got house paint in the cabinet. I'm not saying black works any better than anything else either. It just might need to be just anything okay. I just happen to have black because that's the color of my trim in here. Not black. I was I got my new computer and remodeled the office here a little bit and making a spot for my computer over for the D1 to go somewhere else. Moving stuff around and I was painting and I'm like, wait a minute here. This is the most perfect stuff there is. There's gotta be a way to get on it. To get it on there. Now, that's looking good, but it don't have that bright white. It just don't have that bright white flaky stuff that I'm used to or I like to see. I'll take one glove off here. I'm getting ready to get wet. I mean, she does have some crackers. But as far as an even burn, anything in it, oh, it's clean, it's gorgeous. It just don't have the texture I'm used to seeing going from the other side. I'm used to seeing that. Lots of crystals, lots of flakes. I'm not seeing it. I actually didn't do half bed line in that graphic. But... Alright, we're just going to take this cup. I'm taking the tape off. Roll it around here. Well, I got this little tub here. Just gonna drop it in there. Now, there's been discussions and stuff. People, um, I had somebody tell me to use a wire wheel. He actually put a wire brush on a bench grinder and was wire wheeling uh, his things when they were done. Well, sounds kind of dangerous to me, but. I can see we're having both hands on the glass would be a quite an advantage. Using a wire brush on a drill, I'd watch your eyeballs and I'd use a softer brush. I used got a brass one set up. I'm not sure if it needs it. What I come up with is get your Scotch Bright pad and just cut your little square off of it. 
and you can wash it by, I mean, that, that's it, it comes right off. That's how fast it comes off. That's it. But while I got it, I'm just... Take that scotch brake pad and just get the flaky glass out of it. You can feel it popping glass out. Snagging on stuff. So rather than send something to somebody with... Some pieces of glass in the pores. Might be a good idea just to... It don't take a minute. You're not going to scratch the glass. But you can feel it. You can tell when it's got poppies and something snagging on it. Just go until you don't feel anything. That's it. And of course, I hit my rags. That's it. No, there's no special lighting going on here. This is actually pretty dark in this corner where I'm at. Over, put you back over here. I mean, a lot of people would say that right there is gorgeous enough. It is. Don't get me wrong. It's not what I'm used to seeing. And I'm kind of hoping the, the one shot will make it pop. And yeah, it could have been one's a little higher than the other. I should have measured but. It is just a test after all. I probably will be burning more on this. And let's see if we got something else going on here. Turn some lights off. I'm gonna take some price tags off. See what it does here. That's well, not bad. Hey, it's a tripod. Yeah, I can't find it out. It works. Uh, I hate this camera too. Turn the one next to it off. Well, of course I don't put it on one.
Uh, only thing I don't like about that stand, they're actually nice. Uh, this particular one doesn't let you choose colors, it just goes through this rainbow thingy. It's nice. I would prefer one that just sticks with the color. Now I got the one next to it, but it don't rotate. It's got a remote, and it'll let you choose colors and do all kinds of stuff. So the hunt continues to find a rotating base that'll do what I want. They're only like 12 bucks on Amazon, folks. Uh, don't even try making one. Just <laughs> go to Amazon. And please do me a favor. If you're buying stuff off Amazon, go to smile.amazon. And register a charity. Uh, my favorite is called Riders Unlimited. They're in Ohio. I've selected them for my charity. Some friends of mine are volunteers there. What they do is train horses to work with disabled kids and disabled people. If you can go to their website, make it to the videos, and not need a tissue, you can unsubscribe. Um, seriously but if you add a charity if you go to smile.amazon add a charity a percentage of your all your purchases will get donated to the charity it don't cost you a thing you're spending amazon's money that's my charity that's who all my extra purchases i send it to them if anybody can use it it's worthwhile and I know it's going for a good cause. Now let's get this thing posted and see how much fun people have with it. It almost looks like it's going backwards in this thing. Someone's got the MC Escher thing going. <laughs> 